Good morning everyone. Today we are going, going to learn about lubricants and the different mechanisms that are applied for these lubricants. So what is a lubricant? So lubricant is a substance which when applied will allow smooth functioning of the moving surfaces. So what happens if we don't apply the lubricant? When the moving surfaces slide over each other, they create friction and it causes wear and tear of the machinery. So to avoid that, we usually use lubricant. So what are the criteria of a lubricant? Let us see that. So the first criteria is it should avoid friction. A lubricant will avoid friction. Since friction is being avoided, what will happen? It will resist wear and tear also. So resists wear and tear. Since wear and tear is reduced, its maintenance will also reduce. So reduces maintenance, machine maintenance. Then it will also act as a seal to prevent corrosion. So prevents corrosion. So these are some of the uses of a lubricant. It will remove friction. Since friction is removed, wear and tear will reduce. And when wear and tear is less, its maintenance will also reduce. And it will also act as a seal from atmospheric oxygen and humidity and prevents corrosion. These are, these are the main importance of using a lubricant. Now, we will see what are the characteristics of a lubricant. How should a lubricant be? So, the first thing is its viscosity. It should have a good viscosity index. That means over a wide range of temperature, there should not be change in the viscosity. So, good viscosity index. If the viscosity changes with little change in temperature, then it cannot act as a good lubricant. So, it should have good viscosity index or high viscosity index index then it should have high boiling point usually machines are operated at high speed and high temperature so under such temperatures it should not vaporize so to avoid that it should have high boiling point so high boiling point then when the machine is operated under cold conditions or when the atmospheric conditions change and it becomes cold, it should not freeze. If the lubricant freezes, it will no more act as a lubricant. It will clog the pores of the machinery. So to avoid that, it should have a very low melting point, usually lower than the operating temperatures and the boiling point should be higher than the operating temperature. Then it should be chemically inert. What is this chemical inertness? That means it should not, the lubricant should not react with the metal surfaces. If it reacts then rather than acting as lubricant it will act as a corrosive uh, liquid. So to prevent corrosion or any other wear and tear, we require chemical inertness of the lubricant. Then it should, uh, the lubricant should, uh, should not decompose at the operating temperature or under operating conditions. So it should be very stable. So high stability is required by the lubricant so that it will not decompose under operating conditions. So these are the some of the characteristics of a good lubricant. 
now we'll see different mechanisms of lubrication so under different operating conditions different kinds of lubricants are used and under no condition can we use only a single type of lubricant usually two to three types of lubricants are blended together so there are three types of mechanisms the first one is thick film lubrication or hydrodynamic lubrication or fluid film lubrication so in this case as the name in, is indicating a thick film of the lubricant will be present between the two sliding or moving surfaces so here we have the two sliding surfaces and this is the lubricant so a layer of the lubricant will be present on the upper surface a layer of the lubricant on the lower surface and in between these two surfaces again there will be many layers of the lubricant so when there is a thick film of lubricant in this manner what happens there is a good thickness here of the lubricant so what happens this will avoid the direct contact between the two moving surfaces when this direct contact is avoided there will not be any friction caused by the moving surfaces now these this lubricant which we are using if this is very resistive in nature will it act as a good lubricant no if it resists the movement then there is no smooth sliding of the surfaces so this should not be viscous it the viscosity of the fluid used here should be very very less so we require a lubricant with low viscosity since the viscosity is low if it flows down under the operating conditions can it act as a lubricant no so its velocity we should be low that means it should not flow away from between the surfaces so low velocity then we have to see how wide is the surface so depending upon the area on which we are applying the lubricant so area is also very important if the area is huge then its ability to slip off will be very very less okay so these are some of the important characteristics of the fluid that we use in case of thin fill a uh, thick film lubrication now usually what are the different kinds of lubricants used here so as we learned no individual lubricant can be used so here the main lubricant is hydrocarbon but hydrocarbon alone cannot be used because this hydrocarbon will have some unsaturated molecules they tend to react with the atmospheric oxygen if they react with the atmospheric oxygen they form a gummy substance once the lubricant becomes gummy it will no longer act as a lubricant so it will damage the instruments or the apparatus so along with hydrocarbon some antioxidants are added these antioxidants will prevent oxidation of the hydrocarbon under operating conditions then this hydrocarbon should not melt or vaporize under the operating condition so to prevent that to maintain uniform viscosity all throughout the year we add long chain polymers so when long chain polymers are added they will make the hydrocarbon maintain the same viscosity through all the temperatures throughout the year okay so we'll see which uh under what conditions this thick film is used this thick film is used mainly in our watches where the hands rotate 
those bearings then scientific instruments then uh, our uh, shafts the cycle pedals in such cases also this type kind of lubrication is used in sewing machines so since the film of the lubricant is thick it is called as thick film since the viscosity is very low it is fluid in nature the lubricant so it is also called as fluid film lubrication now why is it called hydrodynamic lubrication it is called hydrodynamic because it acts as a lubricant for no, non parallel moving surfaces also let us say this is the shaft and this is the bearing if the shaft comes in contact with the bearing it will create noise and wear and tear so to prevent the contact between both what do we do we add a thick layer of lubricant here so this lubricant will avoid the contact of the shaft with the bearing since this is prevented there will not be any wear and tear so since in these cases also this kind of lubrication is used it is also called as hydrodynamic lubrication okay whether it is thick film lubrication or hydrodynamic lubrication or fluid film lubrication all mean the same okay now we'll go to the next type of lubrication which is called as thin film lubrication thin film lubrication or boundary lubrication so in this case what happens is we have the two moving or sliding surfaces here the lubricant gets absorbed a thin layer of the lubricant gets absorbed on the upper and lower sliding surfaces in this manner okay and this absorption is either chemical chemical adsorption or physical adsorption this adsorption is a is mainly surface phenomenon so this happens only on the surface of the metals on the uh, upper sliding surface and the lower sliding surface so the main characteristic of the lubricant used should be it should have some ability to get absorbed on the surfaces so for that sake it should be polar in nature if it is polar in nature then it will have the ability to get absorbed on the surfaces so the characteristics of the lubricants used under thin film lubrication should have polar groups then usually only hydrocarbons can resist high temperatures so long chain hydrocarbons are required now their viscosity should be very high because it's a thin film so we require high viscosity lubricant okay so the lubricants which fulfill these conditions can be used in this case so we have the animal or plant oils which are also called as fatty oils these are also called as fatty oils they are nothing but esters of long chain carboxylic acids so these fatty oils have polar groups so they have the ability to get absorbed on the surface of the metals but under the operating temperature they decompose so they cannot be used individually so along with this what do we add we add mineral oils mineral oils are nothing but long chain hydrocarbons so long chain hydrocarbons mineral oils are added they do not have the polar groups but they can resist the high temperatures that means they can operate even under high temperatures and pressures then these 
few are there but none of them are highly viscous. We require a lubricant which is highly viscous. So we add solid lubricants like graphite or molybdenum disulfide. Both these have high, they are highly viscous in nature. So a blend of fatty oils, mineral oils and graphite or molybdenum disulfide is used as lubricant in this case. Okay. The next mechanism we will discuss in the next class. Thank you.